أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات سباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرج البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم رجع البصر كرتين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسعا وخو حسير ولقد زينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيها وجعلناها رجوما للشياطين واعتدنا لهم عذاب السعير وللذين كفروا بربهم عذاب جهنم وبئس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سم سمعوا لها شهيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاء أنا نظير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ذلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب بالسعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسرقا لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يغشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير صدق الله العلي العظيم Salam alaikum boys and girls, Kushali Mubarak on the birth of our 10th Imam. Yay! When I was preparing this, I was thinking and I realised I really, really missed the mosque, especially on a Kushali, because we'd go there, we'd meet people, soak in the atmosphere, and of course, we'd get the niyaz. Eek! So I want you to make me a promise. When you're listening to this from home, I want you to decorate your houses, I want you to dress up and also bake some cake. Make it feel like a joyous occasion. Because this is a very special man we're celebrating, the 10th Imam. And what better way to start this than a quote from him? This was a quote that was actually said by our first Imam, Imam Ali, but repeated by our 10th Imam. He said that good opportunities are like clouds. They pass away very quickly. Now, what does that mean? Well, in life, we get opportunities every single day, opportunities to become better people. But sometimes we turn them away because we might be a bit lazy or because our friends might not be doing it or because we don't really know what it is. But every opportunity is a gift. Imagine if your friend gave you a gift and you just turned it away. It would be rude. <laughs> All right, get it together, old boy. Opportunities, though, are gifts from God. And so we should try our best to make use of every single opportunity so we can become better people. And opportunities come in all different shapes and sizes. We're all fresh from the Euros. So an opportunity could be a three yard tap in, or it could be a 30 yard strike. Some are easy, some are difficult. But the thing is, is we've got to try our best no matter what the opportunity is. But it is difficult to balance having fun and making use of opportunities, going to school, playing sports. How are we all meant to do this? Well, it all comes back down to time. Time management. In fact, we've got a whole surah in the Quran about that, surah 103, surah Asr, where it talks about time and the importance of time, and that if you don't use your time well, then you're at a loss. But how can we practically make sure 
that we use our time well. There's many different ways. Personally, I like to make a list at the beginning of every single day of what I want to do. And as I go along, I tick it off. But I'm sure there are other ways too that you can make the most of every single day. Making the most of all of these opportunities, which is a gift from God for you to become a better person. And how best to celebrate the life of the Imam than to become better people. You know, when we celebrate Kushalis, I think it's really, really important to know a little bit more about the Imam, a fact file, if you will. So, the Imam's father was the ninth Imam, Imam Muhammad al Jawad, and the Imam's mother was Lady Samana. Lady Samana was from Morocco. And again, as we're fresh from the Euros, and unfortunately we've been seeing a lot of racism, one thing to note about the Imams is they were not only spiritual guides, but they used to fight for social justice as well. Lady Samana was of black origin. One of the reasons why the ninth Imam married the tenth Imam's mum was to make a stand against the racism that was prevalent in the Arab society. So this fighting against racism is nothing new. It's something that our Imams practiced and something that they taught us, that we should always stand up against wrong, we should always stand up against racism. The Imam was born on the 15th of Zilhij and he died on the 26th of Jamad al-Akhir. He's buried in Samarra and hopefully we all have the opportunity to go to Samarra if we haven't gone before, to Ziarat, to Iraq. It's truly a wonderful experience and of course his child was the 11th Imam, Imam Hassan al -Asqar. So that's a quick fact file about the Imam and it's very important that we know these facts so that we can go forward and know more about the Imam, especially the later Imams, who I feel we don't really know that much about. These Imams are equally as special as the preceding Imams, and we should make an effort to get to know them as much as we do the other Imams as well. And I think the best way, the best way that we can celebrate the life of this gem is by taking some lessons from the Imam. The Imam's title is Al-Naki. Al-Naki means pure. And actually, the four lessons that I've picked that we're going to look at today, the first letter of each one of those lessons spells the word naki. It's fantastic. You can remember these four lessons easily. What are these four lessons? So the N stands for noble. The imam was noble. The A stands for age. The imam came to imamat at a very young age. The Q stands for Quran. The imam was very close with the Quran. And the I stands for intellect. The imam was known not only for his spiritual intellect, but also his emotional intelligence too. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. N, nobility. Nobility means that the Imam was respected. Respected by who? Respected by those around him, by his family, by his friends, but even more impressively, he was respected by those who didn't like him, those who were his enemies. Mutawakkil was one of the caliphs during the time of the Imam. And when he invited the Imam, to his city, he treated the Imam with a lack of respect. He put him under house arrest, treated him like a prisoner. It was awful treatment towards the Imam from the tyrant Mutawakkil. But Mutawakkil came to the Imam for advice. Imagine, imagine if someone who doesn't treat you very nicely comes to you for advice. That must show something about your character. It must show that you're an amazing person, that even someone who's treated you awfully comes to you for advice. And so the Imam was a noble character. What's the lesson that we can learn from this? Well, the lesson is, is that we should be nice and we should respect everybody, no matter if they do harm to us. Why? Because we're all the creation of God. And ultimately, everyone deserves a little bit of kindness and a little bit of respect, no matter how much wrong they do to you. That is true nobility. So the N, the lesson beginning with N, is nobility. We should all try and be noble like the Imam. A. A stands for age. Did you know the Imam came to become an Imam at the age of either six or eight? There's debates about which one. But the important point is, is that both six and eight are incredibly young. Probably younger than most of you. And the important thing to note from this is that age should never be a barrier. I often hear the, the excuse sometimes that I'm too young for this, or I can wait a couple of years and I'll do it then. But if the Imam can become a leader at the age of six or eight, then there's nothing stopping you from doing some excellent and amazing things at your age. Of course, it needs practice. Of course, it's not gonna come overnight, 
But you should try and become better from now and never use that age as a barrier. So A stands for age. Never let age be an excuse. What does Q stand for? Q stands for the Quran. Like all of the Imams before our 10th Imam and the two Imams after, all of them had a really, really close relationship with the Quran. That meant that they went beyond reading it and also memorizing it and understanding it, but they implemented it in their lives as well. And that's the best way that you can appreciate something because if you implement it, it shows that you've got a deep understanding of it and that you truly understand what it's for and why it's important to act it out. And I think it's often important that we go beyond reading and memorizing it. These two elements are very, very important and they are the start. We've got to do them in order to develop beyond them. They're fundamental. But then beyond that, have some conversations at the dinner table about something you've read in the Quran. Have some debates with your parents. In fact, every time that I prepare for these short lectures, I always ask my parents questions. Have many debates with them about the topics we're talking about. It helps me to understand the topics better. And ultimately, if you understand something better, it becomes easier to implement in your life as well. So like the 10th Imam and all of the other Imams, we should have a close relationship with the Quran and act out what its teachings are. That's Q. And then I. I stands for intelligence. The Imam was intelligent in more than one way. He was spiritually intelligent, but also emotionally intelligent. And that's what I want to focus on today. Now, emotional intelligence is all about how you interact with people around you. How do you have a conversation with them? How do you react when someone isn't being so nice to you? Sometimes people get angry. Sometimes people be rude back. But that's not really the right thing. And the Imam is yet again another perfect example about how to be emotionally intelligent. Because as we talked about earlier, Mutawakkil treated him really, really poorly. But then when Mutawakkil came back to him and asked him for advice, the Imam wasn't rude back to him. The Imam wasn't angry. But the Imam gave him advice out of love. That shows a really high degree of emotional intelligence. And it's difficult. It's easier said than done. I know that sometimes when someone isn't very nice to you, you sort of want to be rude back sometimes, or you want to be angry back. But really, we should be aiming to be at a position where we just don't care. We just move on. And we feel sorry for them rather than feeling angry for them. We pray for them. That is the height of emotional intelligence. And the Imam was intelligent emotionally, but also spiritually as well. A lot of people think that intelligence is just how quickly you can calculate a sum in maths or how much you can memorize. But actually, intelligence is a lot, lot more than that. It's a holistic package. It involves many different things. So again, the fourth lesson that we can learn from our 10th Imam is that we should try and be emotionally intelligent as well as intelligent in all of the other ways as well. So let's summarize what we've discussed today. The four lessons are N for nobility, A for age, Q for Quran, and I for intelligence. And that spells the word naqi, which is one of the titles of the Imam, meaning pure. Before I end, today, I want you to say a massive thank you to four individuals. Firstly, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Imran Ali Khaki, to Shabardala, and to Mamad Asari. These three legends organize these programs day in, day out. And they do an excellent job of it. It's really important that you guys have these lectures. I was remembering back in my days in my annex lectures. I used to love them. But these lectures are a whole lot better than what I got. So say a massive thank you to them. And the fourth person is Say Jawab, whose filming is absolutely fantastic. So get your parents, maybe, to send these guys a message and genuinely say a thank you to them, because without them, these programs wouldn't happen. But as a parting note, just remember, try and be noble. Never let age be a barrier. Always keep close to the Quran and be emotionally intelligent. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajil farjahum. Hussain baant rahe hai nijat le Hussain baant rahe Jatle jao, 
والسلام والسلام عليك يا رسول الله محمد وآل محمد صلوات صلوات محمد